So hello, welcome to today's GeoPost podcast. With us today we have Hannah Lee, hello. Who, who works in analytics with us. Nice to have you with us. Thank you, Christopher. And we're going to be looking at the world of C2C, an area Hannah is a total master of. So just before we start, Hannah, we're going to look at C2C secondhand. Um, what, what exactly is C2C? Maybe this is a new buzz term for many people. Um, so C2C stands for uh, consumer to consumer. It's a way of commerce that involves individuals uh, engaging in transactions directly with each other. So it mainly concerns um, the exchange of, uh, of secondhand goods. And this creates a dynamic marketplace between um, individuals so they can sell and buy um, secondhand items. And for this reason, actually, I also saw some people use different terms like re-commerce, for instance. Okay, interesting, yeah. Um, you said, so we said C to C, but there's also B to C and B to B, you know, right. business consumers, business to businesses. What, how, how really does C to C stand out or what differentiates it? Um, in my opinion, the first uh, difference I can think of is, um, is that in C to C transactions, there are intermediaries that connect buyers and sellers to facilitate and um, streamline the, the exchange process, right? And this intermediary offers a trusted platform where uh, for the transactions to occur. And um, for instance, by reassuring the quality of the product or um, authenticity of the product or securing the payment process or uh, dealing with the delivery process as well. And, and, and all of this kind of enhances the uh, overall user experience. Okay, interesting. So you've spoken about the relationship between yeah. buyer and seller, mm -hmm. but that in this case are consumers, right? Yeah. What type of community is, you know, we're talking about people here, what type of community is there or authentic relationships that exist? Yeah, it's, it's another interesting point of a C2C uh, um, a sector. I find um, the sense of community that we can, we can find, um, you know, in secondhand market, when there are buyers, there must be sellers, right? And, and these individuals are uh, par actively participating in uh, selling their own, uh, own goods. And this kind of fosters uh, the sense of connection and the trust among the users. And if we, um, if we think about B2C transactions, uh, this stands out in contrast to the B2C, where uh, the interaction is primarily between uh, the company and the consumer. Um, and when we think about it, it's usually the company who pushes uh, the products that they manufactured in, um, in existing uh, uh, different distribution channels. Okay, interesting. And when you talk about like this relationship or this connection, it makes me think of social media. Yeah. You know, and social media is also, we know, driving, you know, the C to C spot. Um, you know, I mean, think, let's think about Facebook Market, which is probably one of the mm -hmm, first mm -hmm. platforms to really bring together this possibility of selling among, among, among people. Um, I mean, and also the trend is even getting more. We have TikTok, we have Instagram, we have Pinterest with clickable posts and all. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just sort of makes me wonder, wh why do people actually go for, for second hand? I mean, I think personally, um, you know, finding stuff that you can no longer find, you know, in, in retail shops, you mm -hmm. know, that possibility. But I, there might be stuff also about, um, you know, budget. You know, we're, we're facing complex yeah. budgets today. What, what, what are the motivations for going C to C? Yeah, totally. So, um, according to our eShopper barometer that we annually uh, conduct. What is uh, the eShopper barometer, by the way? I mean, you just brought it up. Yeah, yeah. For those who are not, um, who are not uh, familiar with this study, it's an annual study that we conduct at GeoPost um, over 22 markets uh, in the European continent. Uh, and we interview more than 24,000 people. That's a lot. And it is to uh, understand and follow the uh, changing trends of, um, of online shopping. Mm -hmm. um, so for instance, uh, one of the topics that we treat is uh, C2C shopping. Good, so I got you off track on that yeah. question, but let's get back on to my question. So what motivates you know, the C2C? What, what are those drivers that get people to mm -hmm. buy from one another? Yeah, so in the, in the barometer, um, uh, the eShoppers, uh, uh, what eShoppers ma mentioned as a first motivator uh, was, was this opportunity to uh, save money. Uh, it w like about 65% of them 
and then to support a circular economy for 35% um, of them. But in my opinion, I actually think it uh, consumer motivations go beyond just financial savings or, or you know, environmental concerns. Okay, yeah, and I suppose also for the people that sell, it gives them a bit of pocket money. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, that's, you know. Yeah, and, and also they want, to, they want to free up the space um, uh, that, and they, do, they, they want to dispose of the stuff that they don't use anymore. Yeah, so it's a win-win situation. Yeah. Um, how would you say, I think I've heard about an aficionado mm -hmm. e-shopper. Well, well, just before we go into how they buy, can you describe what, what an aficionado e-shopper is? Um, so yeah, aficionados, we, we, we use this term in our barometer because they are considered to be the heaviest e-shoppers um, in, the, in the study and they, they, buy, uh, they receive about 7.2 parcels per month, which that's is a lot. Like, that's, that's a lot, that's a lot, yeah. So if you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell to make sure you get alerted every time a new video comes out. So I expect that one of the main drivers, and if I think it, if it personally is, you know, if I go C to C, it's to find something that's no longer mm -hmm. available in retail stores. But I know like there are challenges with budgets today and economy's tight, you know. What, what are the drivers that make people buy and sell to one another? Yeah, so according to our um, eShopper barometer, the main motivator is to, yeah, as you say, um, the opportunity to save money. And 65% um, of, uh, of the regular e-shoppers actually mentioned that. And then um, to also to support a circular economy by 35% uh, of them. But I think, in my opinion, it, it goes beyond that um, consumer motivations uh, than just this um, financial savings or environmental co concerns. So just let me backtrack real quickly. You said regular e-shoppers. Mm -hmm. what, what is a regular e-shopper? How do you define it in this in the e-shopper barometer? I mean, I will not go into a technical definitions and everything, but um, they're basically uh, who uh, purchase online regularly on daily basis. And um, uh, our bar barometer tells us that they receive about 5.2 parcels per month. Well, step which, five which, is, yeah, that's a lot. lot. That's, yeah. that's more than once a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> more than once a week. Um, another question I had then. So what, what are people buying? What are those top categories that they're buying? That, that uh, If we look at the C2C buyers yeah. who are regular e-shoppers, yeah, yeah, yeah. what are they generally interested in? They, um, what do you think they, they usually buy? What's your guess? Well, I would say high tech because I just discovered yeah. I'm a regular e-shopper. Yeah. I love high tech, but I know there, you know, there are other categories, there are clothes, uh, you know, there can be furniture. Yeah, surprisingly, they, they buy mostly uh, fashion and, um, and uh, shoes. Yeah, I, shoes. I know you're an early adopter, so you said high tech, but yeah. <laughs> That's right. So we've talked about, Hannah, um, what, you know, the C2C, what, the, what these profile of e-shoppers buy, you know, how old are they? Are these younger people or these older people? Well, they are all agey groups, of course, in the in the market. But in general, the the main driver of the trend is definitely a, a younger generation, um, meaning eighteen to twenty nine years old. Yeah. So, Hannah, we've spoken about um, C to C shoppers, what what they buy, um, how often they they they, they get parcels. Um, how old are these people? Are these younger, older, middle-aged? Of course, they are all the age groups, but I think uh, one of the main drivers of the trend is really uh, the younger generation, uh, meaning 18 to 29 years old. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's very young. And so this generation is going to influence the future. So definitely. I, I would think of you know, e-shopping, you know, this, mm -hmm. this style of, of, of C to C. Um, do you see any trends that are emerging now that will influence the future? This is a trap question. So, well, yeah, I think um, this younger generation find this, um, this C2C shopping uh, as uh, something very trendy stuff to do. So they, they have this uh, desire of uh, finding a unique and vintage items that drive their consumer behavior, right? Absolutely. And I know, for example, there are actually 
dedicated online shops like Vinted, yeah. you know, th that are dedicated to the C2C with, you know, the vintage, um, secondhand products. Um, do you know if, you know, I would say bigger stores or department stores or, or chain stores that, you know, retails uh, in the world, in countries in Europe, let's say, have they adopted a, a secondhand or a C2C approach? Actually, there are tons of examples that I can, I can, um, we can see on the on the market. But if I try to give you uh, some that I can see in, in in France, because I live in France, um, for example, well, you know Alexander McQueen, uh, a luxury yes. fashion brand. They collaborated with uh, with a C two C platform called uh, Vestia Collectif, uh, right. specialized in uh, in uh, uh, selling um, vintage luxury fashion items. Mm -hmm. So they collaborated by offering a uh, authentication service for the platform users who buy Alexander McQueen, for instance. And then also there's uh, this French department store, BHV. Okay, so it's a really big, yeah, big, yeah. you know, five floor store in Paris. Yeah, exactly. Um, they they dedicated uh, some physical space for C two C platform called uh, Celency. It's uh, specializing in uh, selling um, vintage furniture and home decoration uh, so that people can come and buy Celency products. Nice, very, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. So this is really a strong trend. I mean, if we're talking about bigger department stores and bigger businesses jumping on the, the second hand uh, space, this is very good. Um, this leads me to um, Another thought is that, okay, we've spoken about big retail shops mm -hmm. that sell now yeah. secondhand. What about maybe the e-merchants who are watching us today who essentially sell new products, but you don't want to stay in the rhythm yeah. of, of the trends of e-commerce. What, what advice would you have for them when it comes to, you know, going secondhand? Yeah, I think uh, this necessity of, um, of, of intermediary between sellers and buyers gives this vast zone of creativity right in in the c2c sector and uh, i just gave you a, a couple of examples and there are also other examples you can think of uh, for manufacturers of, of uh, new products for example there's um there are uh there's this diy brand called castorama in in france or a cookware manufacturer called the seb seb they collaborated with a uh, back market uh, who sell refurbished uh, items uh, to give uh, reparation uh, service for, for the customers, for instance. Okay, yeah. interesting. Really good. Um, let me just take advantage of a quick question for you, Hannah, before we wrap up. So, Hannah, you're, you're Korean, I all am. right? And I'd really be interested in knowing how does secondhand in Korea compare with, you know, secondhand in France, Germany, and European? Is there a difference or is it identical in terms of what's sold and, and purchased? I think, um, I think the big picture, the big way of, of uh, this rise of C2C is kind of the same. Um, in, in Korea, there was a um, huge trend uh, since COVID uh, where people started to really exchange um, um, uh, secondhand goods. Uh, and there's this uh, big market called Carrot. Um, it's, a, it's a C2C platform in France, an equivalent of uh, Le Bon Coin, for example. Okay. And what was interesting for me was that they, you cannot really buy, you can exchange uh, with the seller or the buyer. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's very, very different yeah, from how it happens yeah, in Europe. I think okay, so. really I interesting. Think so. Well, listen, this, this wraps up the session. Really, thank you very much, Hannah, for all these details. Also, for everybody who's following us today, um, make sure you, we're going to add um, Hannah's LinkedIn account in the notes of today's uh, post podcast please follow her she's sharing lots of great information have any questions drop them down in the comments too and hannah will definitely answer thank you very much for following us thank you hannah thank you for having me christopher great it was our pleasure bye, -bye. thank you <laughs>